Several weeks ago, Sergis Sangari, head of the Near East Center for Strategic Engagement, gave an interview comprised of a series of false claims regarding the Nineveh Plain Protection Units and Assyrian Democratic Movement, while also issuing false claims about the Duach Noche and Assyrian Patriotic Party. By analyzing these false claims together, it is possible to understand Sergis Sangari's political agenda and also explains the public support he receives from some leaders of the Assyrian Universal Alliance. Sergis Sangari states that Nineveh Plain Protection Unit's deployment and security missions in the area under their authority, especially in the context of the Kurdistan region's referendum, provides no strategic interest for us Assyrians. There are two aspects to the false claim made by Sergis Sangari. First, is the obvious fact that the Kurdistan region of Iraq could not impose the referendum in areas secured by the Nineveh Plain Protection Units alongside Iraqi security forces. The second and more important aspect of Sangadi's false claim is that the Nineveh Plain Protection Units continuance of its mission in the buildup and during the referendum was both a physical act of protest and resistance as well as upholding a key part of its founding mission, which is to strengthen our political claim to normalize control and jurisdiction of the Nineveh Plain in favor of independent Assyrians who wish to maximize their autonomy, and the creation of a new Nineveh Plain province separate of the Kurdistan regional government and equal to other provinces under the government of Iraq. Nineveh Plain protection units are indeed fulfilling the mission they have set for themselves and Sergis Sangari is making a false claim in saying that there is no strategic interest for us. Sergis Sangari also states that the Assyrian Democratic Movement stands against the referendum only in the Nineveh Plain, which is meant to show consistency with his false claim about the Nineveh Plain Protection Unit's effort, serving no strategic purpose. On June 7, 2017, Assyrian Democratic Movement Deputy Secretary General Mr. Yaqub Yaqub indicated that a referendum could not come at the expense of Assyrian rights and interests and must also meet the specific set of demands, including referendum must be to establish the democratic policy that assures the rights of all people and national groups within it, a vision and policy for the place of our nation in a new state, realization of autonomy within the existing borders of the Kurdistan region of Iraq for our nation. Laws to ensure the full rights and freedoms of our nation. Resolution of the litany of land disputes in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. Facilitating right of return for all who fled to Syria as a result of the Semele massacre. Legislation to put a stop to all activities creating demographic change to weaken our nation. Assyrian Democratic Movement leaders took to nationwide Arab and Kurdish online, print, and television media to vocally declare opposition to the referendum if conditions were not met, warning of the emergence of a state prejudicial towards other national groups within its borders, as well as resistance to the referendum in the Nineveh Plain. They also provided support and presence at anti-Kurdistan region rallies in the Nineveh Plain to resist Kurdistan region expansionism. The efforts of the Assyrian Democratic Movement were noticeable enough for Masoud Barzani's press office to target the Assyrian Democratic Movement with false statements in order to undermine their resistance activities. Other Assyrian political parties issued single statements of opposition to the referendum, but remained silent thereafter and did not participate in opposition rallies. They were not targeted by the Kurdistan regional government's leadership. Assyrian Democratic Movement representatives in the Kurdistan region's legislature boycotted a key sitting before the referendum and held a press conference as part of the sustained protest by their movement. Sergis Sangadi's misinformation regarding the Nineveh Plain Protection Units and Assyrian Democratic Movement were set alongside fabrications regarding the Duach Noshe and the Assyrian Patriotic Party and the man who leads both, Sepiana Emanuel Hoshaba Yohanna. Sangadi claims that Sepiana Emanuel Hoshaba Yohanna is a true nationalist who put the Assyrian Patriotic Party in the right direction. He says, Altranaye, Assyrian Patriotic Party, take it as an example. There were a lot of members tied to the Kurds. 
Emmanuel Hoshaba came along and cleared them out. He told them, get out. This is meant to indicate that Sepiana Emmanuel Hoshaba never supported Kurdish nationalist objectives and single-handedly purged his party of such influence. Zangadi's distortion of the truth is revealed through a WikiLeaks cable composed by U.S. Ambassador to Iraq, Mr. Zalmay Khalilzad. Ambassador Khalilzad writes that Sepiana Emmanuel Hoshaba made the following policy claims. The Assyrian Patriotic Party wants an Assyrian homeland that provides for autonomous rule and is linked to the Kurdistan regional government. Assyrian Christians would only be truly safe under a democratic secular government, such as that in Kurdistan. Ambassador Khalil Azad's diplomatic cable cites Sepiana Emmanuel Hoshaba saying, the Assyrian demand that those areas of the Nineveh plain that are predominantly Assyrian be linked to Kurdistan. Ambassador Khalil Azad noted that the Assyrian Patriotic Party proposal mirrors Kurdish proposals described in Reftel to annex portions of Nineveh province to the Kurdistan regional government. U.S. diplomatic cables such as these clearly show that Sangari is creating stories by saying Sepiana Emmanuel Hoshaba purified the Assyrian Patriotic Party of Kurdish nationalist influence. U.S. diplomatic cables show that one set of pro-Kurdish Assyrians who are Sepiane were replaced by more of the same. Sangari's fabrications to cover up the reality of the Assyrian Patriotic Party and Emmanuel Hoshaba extends to the Duachnoshe. Duachnoshe is a translation of Peshmerga into Assyrian. Sergis Sangari says that today we have pulled them, the Duachnoshe, off of the battlefield because I'm independent. I can pull them off and bring them in anytime I want. A Christian Science Monitor news article published on January 14, 2017, directly quoting a Duachnoshe officer reveals the extent of Sangari's fabrications. The article quotes Duachnoshe team leader Samir Oraha about the start of Operation Conquest to liberate the Nineveh plain from ISIS. Oraha is quoted saying, we were ready to attack. They even told us the hour and we were all preparing to leave the base at 4 a.m. when the order came that we couldn't go. The article states that on the eve of the battle, Peshmerga commanders told Duachnoshe fighters to stand down. This indicates the complete lack of independence of the Duachnoshe and the ability of the Peshmerga to command them. As Mr. Samir Oraha says, they were ordered to stand down. The Duachnoshe's true relationship with the Peshmerga is revealed through the writings of Duachnoshe fighters and investigative news reports, such as those conducted by the respected British newspaper, The Telegraph. Tim Locks, a Duachnoshe fighter from England, wrote a memoir called Fighting Isis. Locks reveals the following in his book. The Pishmirga, the Kurdish army, were in charge of security in the region, but Duach's aim was to back them up. It was at this point that Duachnoshe was set up to help with the work of the Peshmerga, with a focus on Christian villages in the area. The Duachnoshe works hand in hand with the Peshmerga. He, Brett Filton, an American veteran, said, Tim Locks himself was a former nightclub doorman, working in the United Kingdom with no military background whatsoever. He joined Duachnoshe as a complete amateur. The Telegraph, however, reports that Tim Locks left the Duachnoshe and the battlefield because of frustration at being prevented from fighting. Despite their aims to back up and help the Peshmerga, the Kurdish Peshmerga controlled and minimized the Duachnoshe's role. This reality is not limited to the foreigners who constitute the Duachnoshe. Even popular soldier support videos show Assyrian Duachnoshe fighters wearing Duachnoshe and Kurdish Zerevani badges. These soldiers operate under the permission and even orders of the Kurdish regional government. Sergis Sangadi's statements about Duachnoshe independence are simply stories. However, Sangadi also appears to make false claims about Duachnoshe capacity. He states, that Duachnoshe have done Tier 1 and Tier 2 level missions. It is important to understand these designations for viewers who are unfamiliar with such military terminology. Online sources used by Sangari indicate that Tier 2 missions are conducted by Rangers, Green Barrets, and normal Navy SEALs. Tier 1 missions are conducted by those units that are the elite of the elite. 
Delta and Devgru are considered Tier 1 units. The sources cited by Sangati himself about such forces state that an example of a Tier 1 mission includes the mission that killed Osama bin Laden. The investigative report by The Telegraph, a respected news source, exposes the fictions being produced by Sergei Sangati. Jim Atherton, a Dwechnosha fighter, is reported to be a 53-year-old grandfather that would not pass many military fitness tests and that he suffered a heart attack and admits he used to be so unfit that he could barely run to the shops. Other Dwechnosha volunteers are reported to be a British actor who appeared alongside Johnny Depp in Pirates of the Caribbean, a nightclub bouncer, an information technology worker, and a former financer. The report finds that many who have no previous military experience. Finally, the news report relies on research and interviews with Michael Steffens, a research fellow for Middle East Studies at the Royal United Services Institute. The Royal United Services Institute is a renowned think tank on international defense and security issues. Steffens conducted interviews with fighters. The news report attributes the following findings about the Duachnoche and similar volunteer forces consisting of foreign nationals. The majority of foreign fighters are kept well back from the front by their commanders, particularly if they are serving with Duachnoche or the Kurdish Peshmerga, and that Steffens is unimpressed by the lack of military training. Sengadi claims that Duachnoche, which consists of untrained, unprofessional civilians, such as actors, grandfathers, and bouncers, as well as former soldiers, is conducting Tier 1 and Tier 2 missions. Such missions are conducted only by the most elite special forces in the U.S. military. The writings of Duachnoche fighters and investigative media reports demonstrate how far Sangadi is willing to stretch the imagination of trusting Assyrians. Images of Jim Atherton, the 53-year-old grandfather and Duachnoche fighter, serve to complete the true picture of the Duachnoche and confirm the reality that Sergei Sangari creates fiction. Atherton wears his Duachnoche badges proudly alongside his Kurdistan region badges, and Sepiana Emmanuel Hoshaba stands proudly alongside him. Outside of Iraq, full and public support for the Duachnoche and Sergei Sangari's efforts come from Sepiana Hormuz Shaheen and Sepiana David David, who are part of the Assyrian Universal Alliance's leadership. They have facilitated the profiling of the Duachnoche with politicians in Australia, while also providing a platform for the dissemination of information by Sergei Sengari. Assyrian Universal Alliance positioning on this issue reflects a consistency with the past decision to have senior Kurdistan Democratic Party member Sepiana Fauzi Hariri serve on the Assyrian Universal Alliance's executive board. While Sergei Sengari's motivations remain unclear, his goals are transparent. His efforts seek to mask the true nature and activities of the Assyrian Patriotic Party and Duachnoche while he elevates them. At the same time, he creates fabrications about the Nineveh Plain Protection Units and Assyrian Democratic Movement to undermine those organizations. The only real beneficiary of Sangadi's efforts is the Kurdistan Democratic Party and other Kurdish nationalist forces. This explains the support received from Assyrian Universal Alliance leaders. In an interview, Mr. Sangadi urged Assyrians to work with and only stick to facts. The facts reveal that Mr. Sergei Sangadi is a specialist in creating and disseminating fictions, all of them geared to undermining the best policies for our nation and attacking those free Assyrians working for those policy goals. The facts also demonstrate that Sangadi is part of a network of Sepiane with a long, documented history of attacking and undermining free Assyrian policies and goals.